Hey everyone, Jordan here. Today we're going to be looking at the second bundle from the range that Scan Computers UK are going to be offering for a limited time. Last week we looked at the more affordable bundle which was the 7600X and the XFX 7600XT for the A620 motherboard. But today we're going to be looking at something with a bit more oomph. Now if you're not familiar with Scan Computers, they're one of the leading UK retailers. They sell components, pre-built systems, even some pro audio and video gear. I'll link their website down below if you want to check them out. So the bundles that they're currently offering consist of an AMD Ryzen CPU, motherboards and an AMD Radeon GPU with a real chunk of money off over buying all the parts individually. Now, when you pair an AMD CPU with an AMD GPU, you get a few benefits over using a GPU and CPU from two different brands. I'll go over these again just in case you missed last week's video. The first is AMD's Infinity Fabric where the CPU and GPU can communicate more efficiently. It also reduces the latency resulting in some increased performance. The second is the Smart Access Memory or SAM which allows Ryzen processors full access to the GPU memory which again can increase performance. SAM is another feature that's limited to the AMD ecosystem but it does help you squeeze every drop of performance out of your components. For the GPU there's a few extra features such as the Radeon Boost and Anti-Lag. Radeon Boost lowers the frame rate during intensive gameplay so it helps your frame rates stay consistent. And then the Anti-Lag reduces impact lag which can be especially helpful if you're competitive gaming. So let's look at the bundle that I've got here. First of all, we have the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, an 8-core and 16-thread processor. This has got a base clock of 4.2 GHz and a boost clock of 5 GHz, but one of the most important features is the 96 megabytes of cache, which will benefit our gaming benchmarks. From what I've seen with the benchmarks of this processor, I think this is the AMD CPU sweet spot, as the other X3D variants perform maybe a few percent faster, but at a lot more cost. The motherboard is the Asus Tough Gaming B650 Plus Wi-Fi. I had this board in from Asus when the B-Series first came out and I've got a full overview on the channel if you want a little bit more of a detailed look around. A couple of key things about this board, you've got a 12 plus 2 power stage, 3 Gen 4 NVMe slots, Wi-Fi 6 with Bluetooth 5.2 and loads of rear I.O. options. You've also got support for 128 gigabytes of RAM running at 7600 mega transfers per second using AMD Expo. The last component in the bundle is the XFX Speedster Quick 319 Radeon RX 7800 XT. The 7800XT is a wicked card. I looked at the Hellhound from Power Color before and it's an absolute beast. They're certainly the card that I'd be looking at if I were going to be building a system today. I think it offers a fantastic price to performance. Now the bundle I used last week, that was also an XFX card. The first time I've actually used a card from their company and I was really impressed with these so I'm expecting good things with this one too. In terms of specs, this has got 3,840 stream processes, a core clock of 1,295 MHz with a game clock of 2,124 and a boost clock of 2,430 MHz. The long peel. Very nice long heat sink, almost spans the entire length of the card. It's got four heat pipes on there. There's our dual 8 pin PCIe for power. There's also a switch on the top left of the card. I'm presuming that's a performance and then a silent mode switch, but of course we'll keep it on performance for this one. Two and a half slots thick. And then at the end we've got our display options. So there's an HDMI 2.1 and then three display port 2.1. This bundle is coming in at £869, nice, instead of the usual £969 if you buy them all individually. And again, for those wondering, I did add all the parts up individually and you do get a full £100 off. So again, I'm going to make a test system so we can see how this bundle performs. This time around, I have got a faster set of memory as we're using some higher spec parts. It's a 32 gigabyte set of Corsair Dominator Titanium at 6400 mega transfers per second CL32. Also got a Solidine P44 Pro Gen 4 drive, that's one terabyte for storage. The Nord 2 and HU12A for cooling. And I'm going to use a Corsair 4000X to house it all with an EVGA Platinum 850 watt for power. So I think this combo is going to absolutely rip. I'll get it all put together, then we can look at some performance. So now I have the system all built up, even though it's more of a test system, I really like how the system looks. The parts are very close to what I'd actually use if I was to put this into a build. If that's something you would like to see, then do let me know. The only thing I've done for this system is enable DOCP, which I called Expo. It's the AMD version of XMP, which will set the memory to its rated speed or what you're paying for. Otherwise, the motherboard will set it to 3600 mega transfers per second, which is far too slow for AMD. So certainly do that. The tutorials on YouTube as well, if you're not sure how to do it, it is really simple. Everything else is left at stock. And then I also checked that the smart access memory is on, which the software automatically enabled after detecting two AMD components. 
So we're going to use the same games and benchmarks as last week. Then you can compare them to the other bundle if you'd like to as well. There's a few CPU ones that I'm going to do first, which are all free to download if you want to test and compare. So firstly, we're going to do the Cinebench ones. We've got a score of 17,301 on the multi-score. 3,500 points of the AM4 5800X 3D, which does have a lower clock speed, but the same amount of cores and threads. So that does show a great generational improvement. If you're wondering about the other score that's on there, that's from doing the thermal test, which runs multiple cycles of the test to build up heat over a single one with just sheer power. I also tested Geekbench 5, Blender Render, and then the 3D Mark Time Spite in Still Nomad, which gave some nice improvements over last week's bundle, especially in Still Nomad as that's meant for higher end systems, which pretty much crippled the budget combo we looked at previously. So temperature wise, the CPU reached a maximum of 85.8 with a room ambient of 27. So that's a 58.8 degree delta, which is really good for an air tower. I actually think that it's great that you don't need to use an AIO to cool it, especially for those that are looking for longevity and less maintenance from their system. I also just want to point out that I have got the fan set to 1600 RPM, which is a good balance of airflow, but not being too noisy. Obviously you'll use PWM at home, which I expect you will get some cooler results with, especially for the Noctua fans but I use 1600 RPM to keep it all consistent. It's also handy if I want to use the data for something in the future. So now we move on to the gaming benchmarks. I've tested 1440p and 4K for this one, as when I tested the Howhound 7800 XT, you can get away with playing certain games in 4K. I'm also going to be using the average and 1% lows for the FPS to make it a little bit less complex. But if there is a game that you'd like to know the minimum or maximum FPS for, then leave a comment and I'll get back to you about it. So most of the titles easily reached over 100 FPS in 1440p. Now minus Starfield, which has always been hard to run on any graphics card that I've tested, be it Nvidia, AMD or Intel, just doesn't seem to be very well optimised. But as you can see, flicking on FSR really helped. Moving on to 4K, you can see most of the games are console-like frame rates, with the exception of Starfield and Cyberpunk, which are the more intensive games. But just bear in mind, we are using 4K and also the high settings, which is something that's a little bit demanding for this tier of card. So like last week, I tested Cyberpunk in high, then also with high FSR, then high FSR and Radeon Boost. I've done this again, but also with ray tracing in 4K, so a total of 12 runs. Baseline high is very playable in 1440p, but like you saw in the previous chart, in 4K it does struggle a little bit. Switching on FSR does give a big benefit to both 1440p and 4K. And again, if you're used to console-like frame rates, 4K high with FSR is more than playable and pretty visually smooth. Covering some of the ray tracing results too, this is where the card will struggle without some kind of software help or keeping the resolutions and settings lower. Once I put on FSR, I made a world of difference, again, getting into the console frame rates in 1440p. Finally, Radeon Boost, as I mentioned in the budget combo, it's more of a visual thing as it changes the resolution to keep the frame rates up, but it does give a big boost to the maximum frame rate and of course keeps the frames consistent. I didn't notice any visual things there to note, so I'm guessing it's working pretty well. If you're also wondering about the graphics card temps, to reach a maximum of 78 degrees on the hotspot, which removing the ambient is a delta of 50.9. I think this is a fantastic combo. As I mentioned at the start, I'd probably go for a 7800 XT if I was to build a system now. I'd probably just get the X3D to go with it, because obviously you do have those benefits by pairing the two AMD parts together. With the 100% off, you could also buy a nice fast Gen 4 NVMe or even pay for your cooler, so it's a cracking deal. So if you'd like to see anything else with this bundle, then do let me know in the comments box below. Or if you have any more questions, I'll put the link to this in the description if you want to pick one up. A little bit of a teaser, I have been cooking up some other stuff with Scan that you won't want to miss. So do get subscribed and ding the bell if you haven't already. So you get notified for when that goes live and the future videos. Thank you all for watching. Hope you've all enjoyed it. Thank you to Scan for sending this out for me to cover. And I'll see you all in the next one.